Hi, it's Jenna Hansbar. I'm going to talk about some of the complex chords in the music of XDC. We're going to look at two songs. The first one is Rook from the 1992 album Non Such. And Chalk Hills and Children from uh, the 1989 album Oranges and Lemons. Now Rook starts off with these uh, chords that played in the piano. It's predominantly the piano all the way through. There are some orchestral instruments that add color to it at various points, but the introduction of these sort of dense sounding chords. So in each case, I've tried to stick to the original voicings. The first one, the B flat major seven, the sharp 11 uh, is played an octave lower, but I'm playing it here uh, on the guitar, octave higher. Um, and the next chord is the C major 6. However, in the recording, the C is on top. It's an octave higher, but because of the mechanical differences, it's a little bit tricky to play on the guitar. So I've just altered it slightly and played it in that way. This chord is exactly the same as you hear in the recording, the D minor 7 of uh, A. A, D, C, F. And this one is also the same voicing, but an octave higher. You then have this uh, dominant 7 sus 4 chord, which breaks up that sort of uh, continual, you know, chord after chord. It's a really nice contrast, actually, and creates a sort of element of suspense. It's uh, A sus 4 with a flat seven on top. And the melody it sort of has a folky, um, almost sea shanty aroma about it. Beautiful melody and such a leap as well. And there's a whole octave there and he really, he really goes for it. Rook, rook, read from your book. Who murders who After the second verse it goes to this sort of... This is like a D minor 11 flat 6. You got the root, minor 3rd, 11 flat 6, B flat. It's really interesting voicing. It's minor 3rd and a um, minor 3rd. So there are two minor 3rds here, and there's like a tone in the middle, like a pivot that balances the minor 3rds either side of it. You may recognize it as being the voicing that it's the very first chord they sing in Bohemian Rhapsody. Is this the real life? Um, anyway. <laughs> moves down a tone. It then goes to an A major 6. So you've got A, C sharp, E, the major triad, with the F sharp, the 6 on top. It's quite interesting, when you just play a straight triad, it just sounds a bit dull, it's a bit boring really. But just by adding that one note, adding that 6, because you're creating a tone between the 5th the and the 6th, it gives it a little bit of a, a bit of intrigue. I mean, it's not really that kind of far removed from the major triad. It then moves down to the G major 6. It's a beautiful song, and, and the lyrics as well, just, just so moving and uh, evocative. Look, look, gaze in the book. If there's a secret, can I be part of it? Crow, crow, before I let go. Say, is that my name? 
Now, the second piece I'm going to look at is Chalk Hills and Children. This is from the 1989 album, Oranges and Lemons. This is an interesting album. When you start listening to it, the first couple of songs are quite, they're quite straight ahead. Brilliant songs. As the album progresses, it becomes more experimental. And you start getting to songs like Miniature Sun. Now in Chalk Hills and Children, I'm going to show you the chords. So what I want to do again is reduce the chords uh, to their basic forms. Uh, in this case, you have C major, and B flat major, back up to C major, F major, um, F sus to F major, E flat major, D flat major. Now if we take that C major and just move it, the root note up a tone, you get this chord. So C major. It just opens the chord up. Just by moving that, just by shifting that one note, the C up to the second note, you get the C major add two chord. And it's got some really nice voice leading there because you've got the G on top for the C major add two chord. That G goes up to the A as the, the root note goes down. That's a really nice shift. Then you got this F major 7 sus 4, F major 7, E flat major 7, D flat major 7, which has a strong tendency to want to resolve back to the back to the C major 7, or in this case, C major add 2. I don't know, I, it reminds me a little bit of a, a Coltrane turnaround. You get the... Back on the F major 7, E flat, D flat. Into the bridge section. is a D minor 9 chord. The voicing is root, fifth, flat seven, minor third, nine. This is a really nice voicing. So what I'll do is actually I'll play it in its basic form first. It's D minor, E flat major, E minor, F major. And the voicing's in the recording. over E flat, D sus over E, D sus over F, goes into this beautiful chord here. E flat 6 sus 4, and then F minor over D, um, D flat, that's right, F minor over D flat. those fourths moving around there. Now in the recording that's played multiple times so um, it's quite dense sounding there's like organs and synthesizers all playing the same notes um, so fourths can become fifths in some cases uh, so for example if you play C F you've got an imperfect fourth interval. If you, if you invert it, if you put the C up an octave, you then have F and C, which then becomes a fifth. So fourth, fifth. So they're kind of interrelated there. So I've just gone for the more prominent ones, the ones that stand out the most. Then moves into like a, an F major. C major over F and uh, D minor 7 over F and that's quite um, a, a tense chord that uh, D diminished over C you know that classic uh, cadence So 
So from the C minor 11, the D diminished on the C, you've got a real nice movement into the one again. So they're a real good example of how you can be really clever and intelligent with your songwriting and to some extent push the boundaries, push the conventions and of harmony in the, the rock and pop genre. 